transport. Transport is one of the worst fucking aspects of prison. Getting on the fucking prison bus. You've seen it in the movies. You've seen the drama. You, you felt it through the screen like, damn, on the prison bus with all these motherfucking thugs. I'm about to get dropped off at the pen. I've done it so many fucking times. I can't even name it. I used to like the feeling of flipping it around. And knowing that some new kid was feeling that. What I used to feel when I first got on the bus and I was scared. I used to get pumped up off that. Be like, hey, youngster, I got you, fool. Like, it's all good. Like, chill out. You're going to be fine. And you just, you can't tell nobody they're going to be fine. They're pumping it up in their head. They saw Shawshank Redemption. They, they fucking, oh, fuck. I'm going to get off the bus right now. Fools are going to be just staring at me through the fence and shit. But, uh, so on the bus, don't fucking say a motherfucking word don't say a fucking word those transport CEOs they will beat the dog shit out of you if you say something if you even act like you're about to move or make a fucking move you might get fucking shot there's one sitting at the back with a motherfucking shotgun there's one sitting at the front and there's one driving if you try to go anywhere you're getting fucking blasted if you say anything you're getting punched in your motherfucking face and they they do use our terminology because one time I was on there with the motherfucker Moody from uh, from SFV, or actually Lancaster, and um, and you know he was talking a little too much. Transport cop just walks over all calm. This fool was gangster as shit, big ass fool. Fucking fool was just Jack. He comes over all calm and he goes, "Blah! Shut the fuck up, bitch! Don't talk on my bus." And we're just so, "Oh fuck!" We're white. So we're like, motherfucker, we're automatically pissed at Moody, pissed at him. He just got punched by that cop, but we got his back. So we know as soon as we get off the bus, we got to ride on this cop. We got to fucking ride on him. He just punched one of our people. It don't matter if it's a homie. It don't matter if it's a black. It don't matter if it's a cop. It don't matter if it's a, a CO wearing greens, man. You got to ride on him if your boy gets hit. If your boy hits a cop, if your boy wiles out and takes off on a cop, you have to ride or you're getting whacked. How fucked is that? You're around a bunch of liabilities. You're around a bunch of people on drugs. You're around some people who ain't getting out. And if they decide to punch a cop, if they decide to whack a cop, you have to jump on that cop too. So in this story, it was me and, and some of my cats. We were fucking... We're sitting there and we know what's got to go down. We're getting off the bus and we talk to him. We say, hey, dog, we got you. It's, it's time. We're going to ride for you. And he talks everyone down out of it. He actually had rank on everyone. This motherfucker had rank on all of us by far. And he talks he talks everyone down out of it. He said, no, nah, no, nah, we ain't doing shit for that. He's like, I was out of line and, and we ain't riding on him. And, and there was a couple, you know, white boy from Shasta. And there was a couple other cats fucking that... They didn't like that call, you know, but this is our higher up. That's the call he made. Like, he, this fool outranked the shit out of us. So, I mean, it, it was just all, all we had to do. But but a lot of people didn't like that call. I was okay with that. I don't, honestly, you guys, I may tell all these war stories. I may talk about work I've put in, but I wanted to fucking come home. I thought some of the rules were fucking stupid. And I think that one is massively crazy. That if one of your crazy ass boys takes off on a cop, takes off on a cop, that you have to. And you ain't going to catch five for that. You're going to get beat up for five fucking days by a bunch of fucking goon squad, swole ass COs. You're going to get beat up for five, six days from them. And then you're going to catch five, six years, if not ten, if not a life sentence. You better not hurt one of them too bad. You're getting life for sure. The, the city's picking it up. You're done. Your life's over. Because some J-Cat motherfucker, J-Cat is what we call a crazy fool. A J-Cat motherfucker wanted to hit a cop wanted to take off on him, couldn't control his emotions, and now we're fucked. So this is why it's such a massive thing in the system to be emotionally stable. We don't let our people take meds. If you're white and you're GP, you do not take any meds. I don't care what you have, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, whatever the fuck you have, you ain't taking no pills. You ain't taking shit. We need you at top fucking level. We don't need a, a liability. We don't need a mental case. We don't need someone who's going to start us no drama. We need top-notch soldiers. So this is why that's a rule. There's no fucking meds taken. 
I've had people write me and they say, well, what if I have this? And what if I have that? And what if I have this? What if I have insomnia? What if I, I get claustrophobic? Motherfucker, you better drop all that shit. That shit don't exist in there. There's a few things, and, and you guys might not like this, but there's a few things that I've noticed do not exist in the pen, and that's anxiety, that's depression, and that's fucking just overall mental disorders that are controllable. I know that you, people are diagnosed with that shit out here, but that shit don't exist in prison. Why? Because it can't exist in prison. You won't, we won't let it exist. People may be going through something, but they're forced to just sack it up. You can't call the cop over and tell him, I'm feeling claustrophobic. You'll get your ass beat. He'll say, what the fuck did you say? You're what? Oh, fuck that, open the door. I'll probably come in and whoop the shit out of you. You're not gonna fucking tell your boys, I have anxiety, I need medication. You're not gonna fucking tell a cop, I need to see medical, I have anxiety. It's not gonna happen. Motherfuckers are gonna check your medical slip. That's a thing in prison. You don't go nowhere, you don't talk to no one, you don't do anything without permission. One of your boys is rolling with you everywhere you go. We call it shadowing and nobody is going anywhere alone ever. It's complete fucking adherence to our rules 24 seven. This is why I'm so militant still. I've seen people drop shit in the comments like, Wes isn't even happy. He's not chill. He has no chill in him. Motherfucker, take your own advice, man. I'm perfectly fine. I love the life I live. The intensity I keep fucking propels me in every goal I have. And I wish this upon people. It's a great feeling for a man to have this, as long as he keeps it in check. There's a lot of solid white dudes in the prison system. There's a lot of fucking drama though. And it's few and far between that you'll catch any of them that live by some true character. I probably met a handful the whole time I've been down. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just a reality of the situation. Some people just really haven't been held to the highest standards of being a quality friend or just human in general. They don't really understand. And that, like I've said before, that's why I was such a good leader because I would lead by action. I would make sure I was up. I would make sure I did my workouts. I would make sure I got my results so that I got the youngsters to want to work out. Now the shot out fools who don't even look good and they're saying, hey, we gotta get this routine in. That don't really make people wanna work out. The kid's just thinking, I don't wanna look like you, fool. Like, you don't even look good. Like, you, it don't even seem like your workouts work. I'm gonna go hit that shit with Wes. I'm gonna go hit the bars, man. I fool on jack mode, you know? So one thing that continually gets me, because I talk to a lot of people who've done time or they've been through some shit or they, they went through a massive, a massive event in life that changed them. And they tell me about how when, when the times were tough, they were really grinding. They were really programming hard they were really pushing themselves. So one thing that's always hard for me to accept is how do you get away from that? Because me personally, I love living in that zone. Yeah, I'm intense. Yeah, yeah, I get it, but I like it. It pushes me, comfort kills me. I can't just sit there when I know what I'm capable of, when I know I can reach a higher potential by just staying uncomfortable, by pushing, by never letting up. Like, so, to brag about the past you, when you say, hey, uh, I used to do time and I did it this way and this was this and that, you're almost fucking just talking shit on the present you. Cause why ain't you that no more, man? You were that then, why ain't you that now? To steadily progress is life. Death is to regress. There is no fucking stagnation in the goddamn universe. You're either growing or you're dying. Why are you choosing to die? Why do you think you're so depressed? Why do you think you're falling off? You chose death. Progression is life. Push yourself. Don't ever let yourself not be your best. Men are fucking built to grind. They're built for fucking war. They're built to fucking hunt. The world is much richer for having the devil in it. As long as we keep our foot on his motherfucking neck, we need positive and negative. There has to be winners and losers. Every motherfucking thing on this planet, it only exists by contrast. There has to be both. There has to be good and evil. Nothing would exist without one or the other. So instead of trying to unmake all the terrible things you see around you, how about you just be the one that you choose to be?